I love bass fishing. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's January in Tennessee right now. It's super cold. We just had a huge cold front come through. A big storm uh, earlier this week come through and, and the last two days have just been bitter cold. Real windy, cold temperatures, water temperatures are cooling off. Um, and it's really got the fish in a weird mood. I was out yesterday trying to crappie fish and caught a couple but Man, it's tough. Those fish are just being real strange. This cold front's kind of got them acting up, but I'm out today on Watts Bar Reservoir. I'm gonna try and get on some fish. Um, I'm gonna be fishing some uh, techniques that I think are overlooked in the winter time. Uh, they were actually, some of these were developed in Eastern Tennessee, uh, specifically for catching smallmouth, uh, but they work on all species of bass. And I think a lot of people overlook these techniques in the winter time. Uh, and don't really see the power uh, of these uh, certain lures or baits uh, when it comes to bass fishing. So I'm going to try and uh, demonstrate how to use some of these baits, uh, where to fish them, um, and, and the kind of conditions that you want to see uh, before you pull these out of your tackle box and go fishing with them. So uh, let's see if we can't get on some fish and I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride so stay tuned. Okay, the first spot that we're gonna be fishing is just a bluff wall, kinda comes to a point up here, and it goes all the way down. Um, after all this rain we've gotten earlier this week, the water is quite a bit uh, dirtier than I thought it would be. So uh, we're gonna kinda have to tinker around and see. It's gonna be really tough. Um, I already know it just because I mean the water temps are really chilly I think what are they yeah 46 degrees um, and it's definitely post front conditions so um, we're gonna have to see what the fish want the technique that I was talking about earlier that I kind of want to show everybody is the float and fly so all it is is a little fly or hair jig here tied up this is a spro flat fat fly i have it rigged up on a thill slip bobber got a little bobber stop here and then my bobber stopper is all the way up here that little piece of green thread um this is actually different than how the original setup was created it was meant to be used on a fixed bobber system but because i don't have a really long rod uh, to be able to cast that because I'm wanting this bait to suspend sometimes 10, 12 foot below the surface. It's really hard to cast with a fixed bobber. I'm using a slip bobber rig and it, it should work just as effective. But um, we're going to kind of have to play around it with what depth the fish are sitting at. sucks it's really kind of a boring way of fishing um, but man when your float goes down it takes you to when you're a kid again you know crappie fishing or bluegill fishing there's nothing better it's almost just as good as a topwater bite when you start to see that float slowly go down underwater you know you've got a bite it's pretty exciting but before that Man, I'll tell you what, it's pretty boring. That's why I'm a bass fisherman at heart. Um, it's because I'm constantly moving. But the other cool thing about this technique is it catches all species of fish. I mean, bass, bluegill, uh, walleye, um, white bass, striped bass. I mean, the whole everything. Crappie, I mean, it catches everything. So, um, you know, who knows what we'll catch today. Thank you. 
and honestly a fixed bobber system is better just because you know you have better bite detection you can also when you're jigging the bait like i am on a slip bobber rig i'm actually lifting the bait into the water column when i'm wanting to sit at a particular depth with a fixed bobber that doesn't happen all you're doing when you move your rod tip is that that bait's just wiggling down there it's not moving up like it is where the line's coming through this slip bobber so something to think of Got one. Just like that, guys. It's a beautiful smallmouth or a spotted bass. I can't tell. See, it's the importance of that bobber. The bobber actually did not go under. What happened was it hadn't hit the bottom yet, and my bobber just laid sideways. Looks like a beautiful spot. See that little hair jig in his mouth. Man, this works in the toughest conditions. Nothing else works. This is the hardest part here. Getting him into the boat with that bobber on there. Beautiful Alabama spotted bass. Look at that fish. Wow. It's a gorgeous fish. You can see that spro flat fat fly in his mouth there. It hadn't even hit the bottom and he came up and got it. And that fish was really shallow. It blows my mind that a fish like this will just eat a tiny little bait like that. Looks like a baby little shad. Man, that is an absolutely gorgeous Alabama spotted bass there. Look at that fish awesome let's see if we can't catch another one okay guys so that fish i just caught was relatively shallow i had my bobber stop set at about six feet deep and i was casting it right along this rocky bank and that fish grabbed it before he before the the bait even hit the bottom of its depth so um i may have to adjust and, and fish this a little shallower that fish was also real close to the bank so um we'll see if we can't duplicate that here and catch another one switched up to a ned rig sorry i had the camera off smallmouth yeah nice little fish right there beautiful little Ned rig in his mouth awesome Let's see if we can catch another one Another one. Another small mouth. Sweet.
beautiful fish. I'm tight lining this Ned rig, so I'm keeping it up off the bottom, fishing for suspended fish. You can see I'm, so when I'm making my cast, I'm not letting the bait hit the bottom. I'm letting it sink, you know, three to five seconds. And then I'm keeping my rod tip high, a slight bow in my line. I'm barely reeling it and just twitching my rod. And what that's doing is it's in the middle of the water column quivering. So all these smallmouth are suspended right now. I've caught like three or four doing this in the same area. It's weird, I don't know if some of these smallmouth are moving in here because this bank is sunny and the water's warmer. Because I fished this just a little bit ago and it didn't have any luck and I came back through it and then I started tight lining it like you would with like a gulp minnow or something which is one of the most underrated, underutilized winter techniques there is. I'm gonna try something here. I have another jig head that's a little bit lighter rigged up right here. I'm gonna put a gulp minnow on it and see if I have any success doing that. Just a regular old three inch gulp minnow in smelt color. should catch some fish I'll tell you what Ugh. fish like that stuff but it stinks let's take your jig head here just a three inch gold minnow and in smelt color there we go and this is a 16th ounce jig head. We'll have to see, that might be a little bit too light. It's not gonna get down. And I have this rigged up on, I think 10 pound braid to four pound fluorocarbon. So it's a light line technique, it's super finesse. Got him. Just like that. Beautiful fish. I think these fish are just moving in here because the sun's beating on it. It's a cold post front day, bluebird skies. I think these fish are just pulling up to get warm.
nice fish on that tight line again. I'm telling you, it's one of the most underrated wintertime techniques, especially for smallmouth, but it catches all of them. It's a beautiful fish. Awesome. Let's see if we can't catch another one. Hey everybody, I just finished up the day today on Watts Bar, and I kind of wanted to go through uh, what what I was doing today and the key bait for today how I caught all my fish um, This is a what I'm going to be covering is a technique that I feel like a lot of people overlook in the wintertime months um, Especially if they're struggling to catch fish people come out and they're still fishing the same old things crankbaits um, You know blade baits things like that. There's a lot of things that are effective in the wintertime uh, but I think the technique that I'm going to show you today or right now in what I caught all my fish on today is probably one of the most effective techniques, especially after a cold front goes through. Um, everybody knows a cold front can make for bad fishing. Um, the fish get funky, they get in a weird mood. A lot of times bass, especially in the south on these reservoirs will suspend and it makes them really hard to catch. Um, they're not willing to chase baits like they usually are, you know, when weather is stable um, and it just makes fishing more difficult in general so uh first and foremost i'm going to go through uh exactly the setup i was using today i was just using a six foot nine inch medium light spinning rod um so it's a pretty light actioned rod i was using 10 pound braid to a four pound monofilament uh leader that's pretty light but i was wanting to do that because i was using such a small jig head I would not go anything bigger than six on this technique. And what I'm gonna to talk to you today about is the tight line rig. Um, and, and it's kind of a fancy name for something that's super simple uh, and people have been using for years and years and years to catch fish uh, in a variety of different species of fish. But this is the tight line rig right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, all it is is a, what I have right here is a 16th ounce uh, jig head with a sickle hook. I think it's a number two hook and a three inch Berkley gulp minnow. Um, this is my standard tight line rig. This is generally what I lean towards uh, when the bite gets tough or if I have post front conditions in the winter time. Um, and the key with this bait is you're not letting it hit the bottom. So the great thing about this is you don't snag very many uh, jig heads. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down the bank you're going to cast at a 45 degree angle or so and right, right up on the bank and then you're going to let it sink just a little bit but then tighten up your line with just a little bow in it and you're going to let that lure pendulum back to the boat. Um, so it, it's actually fishing for suspended fish with this lure. Um, it's a great way to catch them and I really like to keep my fishing, uh, especially when it comes to tight lining in the wintertime, super simple. Uh, there's only a handful of baits that I use, um, and I feel like you guys could just pick any one of these and go out anywhere in the country uh, where you still have open water in the wintertime and catch fish doing this. Uh, my number one bait is a 3-inch Berkeley Gulp Minnow. Um, I feel like I catch more smallmouth and spotted bass on this bait than all the others, uh, but the others have a time and place as well. If I'm around bigger fish or I'm wanting to get a little bigger bite, I'll step it up to the four inch gulp minnow. Um, so two sizes, three inch, four inch, super simple. Um, I generally fish mine on a 16th or eighth ounce head. This is just a 16th ounce uh, sickle hook jig head like the one I just showed you. Uh, I feel like anything bigger than an eighth ounce, that bait's falling too fast for those fish to want to come out and get it uh, when the water is really cold or those fish are super lethargic. So 16th ounce or eighth ounce jig head, a three or four inch gulp minnow, that's my go-to. Uh, but there's some other baits that work as well. So you could see earlier in the video today, I actually, I rigged up a Ned rig and was planning on fishing it on the bottom, which I did for a little bit and didn't get any bites. Um, I was just using a, uh, a TRD, a Z-Man TRD in morning dawn color. And I ended up kind of by accident figuring this out. I cast it to the bank like I normally would with a tight line rig. And instead of letting that bait hit the bottom, I just started fishing it like a tight line. I let it pendulum back to the boat and I was just shaking it constantly. And I actually caught like three or four fish, I believe, doing that. So, uh, you know, even a, a TRD worm or a Ned rig, 
uh, can be fished this way. So if you wanted to be more versatile, have one rod rigged up with a Ned rig, which is an already effective bait in the winter time, and then be able to uh, use that for a tight line whenever the situa situation calls for it, you're more than welcome to do that. And I'm sure you'll put plenty of fish in the boat. Um, another thing that I like to do as well is sometimes I'll do this same technique with a hair jig. So this is just a, sorry about that, but dropped it. This is just a hand tied um, hair jig that I actually tied myself the other night. Um, and it's just got some feathers and craft hair in it. Um, and this just looks like a little bait fish and it works great when you're tight lining it. This is an eighth ounce head. So um, another one, uh, if you guys just, if you don't want to make your own, if you want to buy some, is the Spro Fat Fly. Um, this is actually used for the float and fly technique, um, but it's also super effective just letting it coast back to the boat or, or pendulum back to the boat as well, like a tight line rig. Uh, so really simple. I think you guys should keep it simple as well. No need to overcomplicate it. Gulp minnow, a TRD or a Ned rig, and then a couple hair jigs and some jig heads and you guys are going to be set. Next time the bite gets really tough or you have a cold front situation come through and those fish teams is shut down and you're not catching them like you were the week previous or, or, or earlier that week, try a tight line rig on some steeper rocky banks and um, I think you guys are going to have a lot of success. So I appreciate you guys watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.